Hello friends, this video on nutrition in animals part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will talk about the holozoic animals more specifically. Why are we talking about holozoic animals? Because most of the animals are holozoic, that is they take in solid food. So intake of complex matter as food, so whatever we eat that is in a very complex form. So that food cannot directly provide us energy. So that food needs to be converted into some simple form inside our body and only then it will be able to provide us energy. So you look at the screen and you see a lot of animals and all of them are holozoic animals. That is they eat something which is a very complex organic matter. So that is their food. So if here again, these holozoic animals are also of many different types. For example, here you see goat, rabbit, horse. These are all those animals which directly eat plants. So these are also called herbivores. Why? Because they are directly dependent on plants. Here you see tiger and lion. So they are called carnivores because they feed on animals which feed on plants. So basically a tiger might eat up a deer and a deer eats plants. So basically these carnivores, they can eat up the herbivores. So they eat other animals. And you have a third category called omnivores. So human beings fall under this category. So omnivores are those animals which eat both plants as well as animals. Like human beings, they eat plants, like plant or plant products. They also eat animals like fish or meat. So they eat other animals also. So they are examples of omnivores. Even pigs and rats are also examples of omnivores. So these are all holozoic animals because whatever they eat that is in a complex form. For example, when we eat uh, any dish, for example, uh, if you eat uh, a curry, maybe uh, egg curry, okay. So that egg curry which you are eating, that will not provide you energy directly or instantly. So that egg curry is in a complex form. So once it gets inside your body, it needs to be broken down into the simplest form. And then in that simplest form, it will be able to provide you energy. So if you look at it, all these are hetero, all these are heterotrophs. That is, they have heterotrophic mode of nutrition, and all of them depend on plants either directly or indirectly. So the herbivores are dependent on the autotrophs, that is the plants directly, but the carnivores are dependent indirectly on plants. That is, the carnivores they do not eat plants directly, but they eat animals which in turn eat plants. So all the animals are directly or indirectly dependent on plants. So now we will look at the various types of holozoic animals which we have discussed just now. So the first category was herbivores which feed only on plants like cow, goat, horse, rabbit. The next category is carnivores which feed on flesh that is they feed on other animals like lion and tiger. And the third category is omnivores which is like a combination of both. They feed on plants also and they feed on animals also. And the best examples are humans. And crow, pig, rats are also examples of omnivores. So these are all different types of holozoic animals. So now we are going to understand the entire process of holozoic nutrition in more detail. Like all these animals, they take in complex food. So what happens to that complex food when it gets inside our body and how that complex food provides energy to our body. So we are going to look at that entire process. So that is what we will discuss under holozoic nutrition. So this holozoic nutrition involves multiple steps. So let us look at the various steps which are involved in holozoic nutrition. So ingestion which is the first step that is the intake of food. So that complex food is being taken inside the body. So that is the first step called ingestion. In means anything taken in. Next is digestion. This is a very important step because this is the step during which the complex food is being broken down into a simple form and how this process happens that is not that simple but we are going to discuss that in detail. So there are a lot of enzymes which help in this process of digestion which helps in the breakdown of complex food into simple form. And finally the next step which is absorption that is the simple food now 
is absorbed by the body and how it is absorbed by different parts of the body it is it was transported through the blood or the lymph so lymph is also uh, a fluid like blood which flows throughout the body so we will not get into the details of all those but it is like uh, like how blood flows through in through the entire body right so if you want to transport something to one particular part of the body what you can do is you just dissolve that substance in the blood so blood will anyways go to each and every part of the body so that particular substance will get transported to different parts of the body so that's how the concept of uh, transportation happens so now the first step is complex food taken inside next step is complex food broken down into simple form third step is simple form is now absorbed by the body finally assimilation that is the absorbed food is utilized for energy needed for various activities in fact that is the reason why we have taken in food because food is going to provide us energy so in assimilation the food which has been absorbed absorbed that food is going to provide energy so that energy production part happens during assimilation and finally ejection so ejection ejection like ingestion is taking in ejection means giving out now whatever food is not digested so all those undigested food is thrown out of the body now why not all the food gets digested because the digestive enzymes they also have certain limitations they can break down only some substances now there might be certain components in the food which were not being broken down by those digestive enzymes also so what will happen to those complex parts because anyways that is not going to get absorbed or assimilated so that that becomes kind of waste for the body so that is thrown out as a part of ejection so these are the five important steps which are involved in the process of holozoic nutrition so now we are going to discuss each of the step in detail one by one thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again